Welcome back to my review show, where we review these Hellboy books. Where we welcome back. We get rid of shit. I dropped my thing. <laughs> uh, well, ow. Oh shoot, I bent the corner of it. No. Um, welcome to Mignola Mignola Versed, where you get well versed in Mignola books. It's a new reviews thing. We're rev we're keep continuing our Witchfinder reviews. You'll notice that. We're skipping a number here. One, three. That's now how numbers work. Well, that's because, well, I would say the book that we're reviewing is in my hand, but I actually just dropped it and bent the corner of it. Hooray. Witchfinder, Lost and Gone Forever, Volume 2. Now, before I start this, if you want to see w w w how many books I have currently read out of the Magnoliaverse, it is right here. <laughs> Thumbs up. All right. Um, so you can tell I'm actually a big fan of this book. In fact, I'm, <laughs> I will go as far to say as this is one of my favorite books ever. <laughs> it's certainly my favorite Magnoliaverse book. Um, I, yeah, this is pretty much like, I, I love, I love the Witchfinder series, but, um, if we say that all of the, every book in the Witchfinder series is at least great, this book is like above that, like God tier to me, uh, specifically this book. <laughs> Uh, you'll notice I have the variant, the John Severin variant over here, which when I first read this book, um, John Severin became my senpai. He's like, I th he's probably my favorite artist right now. <laughs> Honestly, he died a few years ago, which I'm, I'm sad that I did not get to read this book when it like, first came out. But, um, yeah, John Severin, uh, I looked up a lot of stuff on him and been looking through a lot of his artwork. He's, in, he, um, he did, he was in charge of all the art for Cracked Magazine. He, uh. He, he's known for doing westerns. That's his, that was his thing. He's done a ton of western books, and I think this is his last book ever that he'd made before he died. I think. I'm not totally sure. Uh, it, it seems that way, though. And, um, my god, it's good. <laughs> and the coloring on it, um, is just, just so cool. Um, it's written by John Arcudi this time. So, Mike Mignola and John Arcudi, if you know the Mignola verse at all, John Mike Mignola works on basically everything, but this is mainly a John Arcudi book. He's the, or he was the writer on BPRD, uh, did up to Hell on Earth, and then when Hell on Earth ended, um, he uh, ended his role in it. So the last, The Devil You Know, which is the last cycle of BPRD, is going to be written by somebody else. I'm not totally sure who. That comes out in July, and I will most certainly be reviewing that. Um, I love BPRD, but um, yeah. So where to begin on this? Well, <laughs> So, we just talked about um, the first volume of Witchfinder as a noir. Uh, this psychotically <laughs> um, adapts that, adapts the adaptation of the film noir character from into a, the, the, into the, an 1880s Londoner paranormal investigator, now adapts that into a western. <laughs> And oh my god, it is so awesome. Um, I I love westerns, dude. It's not even it's weird because like I don't know why. The western genre is one of my favorite genres, but I don't even like there are there are probably like five movies in it that I just obsess over that everybody pretty much is. That's the way the western genre works. Um And I don't know, this is just like a a, a bazillion page hand job to me. Um I'm gonna get a little a little uh uh, weird about this because <laughs> right, This is gonna be the most pretentious thing I'm ever going to say in my entire life um, And this is like the most artsy fartsy thing I could ever say Honestly the first time I read this book when I read when I looked at all the art it like animated itself before my eyes That's how awesome. I think this art is like it literally just like moves and I'm not saying that I'm not obviously it wasn't like hallucinating or anything but like I don't know. It's just like my brain instantly is just like, yes, this is how this is how everything is. Oh my god! And yeah, I, I think needless to say, this is my favorite uh, artwork in like any Magnolia first book. Um, he even did some art. John Severin did some art before this in BPRD, and um, I I think that might be it. I'm not totally sure. I think he did one more thing. Maybe not. I don't know. I might be talking about out of my gaping asshole, but. Oh my god, it's so awesome. And the and then 
that compared with the fact that John Arcudi is like an amazing writer. Um, BPRD is like one of my favorite ongoing books of all time. And uh, yeah, <laughs> everything about this book is so fucking good. Oh my God. Um, basically, the plot in this is that Sir Edward Gray, he's following a dude. That's really all it tells you. Um, and you don't need to know anything more than that. If you've read all the other books, uh, you would know that the guy he's pursuing is, what is it, is it Glaren? Is that the guy's name? Um, I think that's, I think it's Glaren. He, uh, he's the guy who, um, initially unwrapped Panya, uh, the ancient Egyptian mummy in BPRD. Um, and then Panya fled to the United States, uh, a little while later, Glaren, I don't know, I don't think he was chasing Panya, I think he just happened to, um, Basically, some shizwaz happened between this book and the first one, and he's just Sir Edward's chasing him. Literally, the relation between Sir Edward and the Heliopic Brotherhood guys is that he hates them, so he just chases them. And this guy happened to be on his radar, so he's chasing him. And he's not even really that big of a character in this. He, um, really, this that whole situation just leads him into a completely new situation that involves witches and. What's I don't know how they pronounce it in here. Um, let's see. Uh, did they, yeah, zombie. They, I like how they localize the the naming of zombie. Um, basically, um, this version because there are like multiple versions of zombies in these books. Um, this is what happens when witches like curse bodies and stuff like that. So this is more akin to the normal zombie you're used to. There's also like the vampire zombies and shit. Um, but yeah, it's a bit different. And, um, yeah. Uh, he leads to them he doing his witch finder shit. He, he, uh, in the beginning, <laughs> I like what they do in the beginning here where he just walks into like a saloon and he's like, so he's both aware of how this kind of stuff goes down in the wild west, but he's also super clueless of it because he's from fucking London. And so he ends up just like sh getting into a, a firefight with a bunch of people just because he's super clueless about what's going on. But he ends up killing them all anyways and fucking throwing them out of the window. Uh, this is probably like the highest body count of any people that Stradward's ever had, at least so far in the books. But regardless, they were all dicks, so it's cool. Um, and then this guy is fucking... What the fuck is his name anyways? Do they even say his name anywhere? It's probably in the back. I never fucking remember. What the fuck? Oh, that's interesting. I never actually looked at that. Um. Uh, hold up. Hold up, hold up. Oh, fuck. Did I never look through this? This is cool as shit. Oh, and there's the sketch. I saw that. The sketch for the variant that is right there. So, you know. And, um, as I said in my last review, that uh, I went to my comic book store, uh, the one I that's near me that has a lot of back issues. Um, and I looked specifically for that variant. Um, it's the only variant in the whole series. And uh, that was the only issue of, of Witchfinder they had at all. Like, that was the last one. And I bought it because I love it. Um, it's not, like, particularly rare. It's just I didn't feel like paying 20 bucks to have it shipped on eBay. When I could just buy it for four bucks at my local comic book store. Um, yeah, I just say his name. I thought there was fucking sketch work of it. Yeah, right here. Does it say his name? Uh, Caller. All right, cool. I never actually... They don't say his name a lot in this. So that's the Magnola variant. And then... That's how he... Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I fucking... Oh my god. Just looking at this artwork makes me so happy. <laughs> um, I read an interview with uh, John Arcudi on um, working with Severin. And one thing that he brought up that I now totally agree with when looking at it is like uh, Severin's particular ability to draw faces and that he doesn't have to rely on any like distinguishing characteristics other than just drawing in the face. You know, like somebody like, I don't know, a lot of writers 
will rely on giving people items to hold and stuff like that or like specific pieces of clothing to make them stick out so that you recognize them as characters but he doesn't really need to do that he just fucking draws the faces so well and it's kind of amazing um yeah oh my god and then this gives his backstory about uh you know when he was a kid um they hinted at it in the first volume but when he was younger when he was 12 actually because I remember dates for some reason more in the Mignola books than I do in fucking real life. Uh, I think it was 1856. <laughs> um, that was his birthday. Uh, uh, he, so there was a werewolf killing shit in town and he went and fought it and he got bit by it, but they, um, they got a bunch of priests to pray his gay away. So it was cool. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and it was actually this guy's son that he killed, but, He's a really nice guy. He's basically like his father-like figure in this area. I don't know. Um, I hope they go more into that in future books. But yeah. And then they find Glaren. Yep, Glaren. I was correct. I wasn't cut out talking about my asshole. But he's a zombie. Dun, 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 dun. I'm pretty certain this came out like the same year that um, uh, what, Undead Nightmare. Um, anybody who plays Red Dead Redemption. Probably. And that would make sense. It's kind of in the height of that period. But such a cool idea to adapt this character into it. It works so well. Like, you slowly, you see him o over the course of the book start off as Sir Edward Grey. And then by the end, he's like in a cowboy hat and stuff. I mean, it's like they kind of just modify his outfit. He actually fucking. I'm. Alright. So this is kind of like an interpretive part of this book. But, um. I'm 99% certain what's happening here is that Edward literally dies. Um, and he's in heaven. He's like, whoa, this place is fucking awesome. But then somebody, f f he, he gets like a fucking gun teleported into his hand and kills somebody in heaven because they need him to still be on earth. And so he gets teleported back to earth. I guess not really teleported, but. You know, and he shoots a guy. So it, that was a really weird section, but I don't think you're fully, you're supposed to fully understand what happens there. Um, and I like that. <laughs> I really like that. And then in the end, he's wearing like a straight up like American, I don't know, outfit, like checkered outfit. I love that so much. <laughs> uh, and then the afterwards, just like, or, Oh yeah, right here. It's just like, and then he went back and never came back to America, and everything died. The end. Because every Witchfinder ending is just depressing for some reason. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm fucking... <laughs> this is my pride and joy. That in specific is my pride and joy. This is just a reprinting, man. This is just a collection. Like, I love this, but I love this more. Because if I got all the single issues of Lost and Gone Forever, I would just... I just explode. I just jizz everywhere. I everything, everything here. Well, except for the issues, except for the issues of Lost and Gone Forever. Like I would, I would jizz around, like in a shape around this, right? Like that episode of SpongeBob where he pops like paint all over Mr. Krabs' house, but he just happens to miss everything. It would be identical to that. I would, I would even do the same thing where I'd like jizz little shapes of like ships into the wall and make it look pretty um and then my jizz would just stay there for forever because you know i would be too busy rereading issues of lost and gone forever this is not going to get monetized bye <laughs>